Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. 257 Collective is still a thing. Uh, it's been a while since we've been on. It's been about eight months, a long time. Um, we've got up to a few things. A lot of things have changed, uh, both personally and as a collective, which we're excited to talk about. Um, but we're just excited to be back. We've got new mics. Um, there's a few things we want to talk about. That we are. We have leveled up. So yeah. we're looking forward to it. Podcast eight. Dipped, it, dipped the pocket a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah, we did. Kalen finally, uh, <laughs> you know, decided to cash in those big bucks. <laughs> Got the new contract now. He bought the boys some mics. So um, very privileged. Thank you, mate. We're hoping, um, you know, with these new mics comes new opportunities out of the bubble soon. Uh, but we'll get, we'll get to that. What are we going to talk about? Uh, yeah, I think the biggest thing for us is just, you know, a bit of consistency. Consistency. <laughs> oh, well, that's not a good start. Um, yeah, so today um, we're going to talk about bubble life. You know, the pros and cons of it. Uh, we'll get we'll address my injury, talk a little bit about that. Um, we've got some merchandise coming out too, uh, or maybe apparel. We want to go better quality than merchandise, so we'll get to that, the story behind that. Yep. Um, we're going to talk about finals footy. First time the Knights have qualified in seven years, so um, it's pretty exciting times up here. And then um, lastly, we're going to talk about sort of a new idea that's going to incorporate the listeners. Um, Something so that we've sort of come up with. Just to, We want to get more interactive with you guys. Um, that's one thing as a collective. That's basically it's, it's written in the name. Um, just get people involved. So we've got that. But um, yeah, just about your injury. Um, tell us what you, what you did, what you've done, and what you're doing. Yeah, so I did my Achilles, um, ruptured it against the Bulldogs in round eleven, yeah, which was pretty hard uh, pill to swallow straight away. Like when it first happened, I was thinking timeline of like nine to twelve months, just because of you only really hear about basketballers doing it. Yeah. So like um, I remember KD did his last year and he hasn't played yet. It's been over twelve months. So, um, but then you know as I sat down and had to think about it, guys like you know Sonny Bill, Dan Carter have done it, and um, they've all sort of come back in six months. And yeah, um, yeah it's. It, like it, it could be worse there's worse things going on in the world at the moment um so but i'm just enjoying the process of uh rehab and just trying to get it better every day but um, what's what's rehab look like what are you doing yeah at the i moment, know what you're doing and yeah. i want you to tell tell people that are listening what you're doing it's there's it's been a little things. bit different for me um because I did my syndesmosis at the start of the year and, you know, just did me stock standard rehab. Um, but I've gone a little bit left field here. Some um, weird things? Yes, you would say weird things. I'm getting advice from some some different people, I guess, um, in different, you know, they're physios or people in medicine that approach it differently with more of a holistic approach. So yep. um, things like... Just an example, example one. Like I so the other day, what did we do? Ice baths. Um, got went into the servo, got ten bags of ice, put it in the ice, and sat in there for ten minutes. I even got you in, Texie in, Croaks in. Um, it's good fun, but it's it's more about. I think for me is like I'm trying to get. Um, I can use this time to get stronger mentally yeah. instead of just approaching it as a normal rehab. Like I think I want I want to come back as, you know, like a reinvented me um yeah. yeah like a mentally stronger me and um just see see where it can take me you know like there's there's not much else to do at the moment so i'm not going to leave any stone unturned i'm gonna just get after it so like along the grapevine uh i don't know who i heard it from but you've become a monk is what is what's getting around yeah i'm i'm trying to <laughs> become like a like a ninja or a monk that's that's basically so um, you catch two thr two flies mm. and you think you're a monk. Yeah, but did you see like they were out here, right? And I just it's probably more like five flies too. And it was about three in the space of half an hour. I don't need, we don't even need fly spray in the house anymore. That's how good I'm getting at this. Uh, Chop, <laughs> chopsticks is the next step. You know what I mean? So Connor turned into a monk. Um, but yeah, it, I mean, I've been a part of your rehab as well, um, in a way, and it's you've come a long way. It's exciting. Are you, um, are you are you happy with it? Like, do you? Th it's different. Like, there's a lot of different things going on. Mm. Are you um, judging me, or uh, are you, you accepting? I it? I am judging you a little bit at times. Yeah, but I'm accepting. Mm. Um, I feel like I'm in the mindset, but if like people judge me, I'm just like whatever. I don't. Well, that's what monks. That's, is that what exactly monks do? right? I'm not phased, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah. I'm trying to get to that level because. I have a bit of a habit of maybe biting a bit easily. And so head noise? And you biting hard. No head noise. <laughs> no more. I don't, used to, you I used don't to get, get head noise. Nah, I used to get head noise. Over the littlest things, like it would just sit, sit on me for days, you know. Um, 
you know, ruin my sleeps. Um, so now I'm at the point where I'm just like, I'm not, I'm not affected by it, boys. I'm just, I'm sitting here like, <laughs> it's pretty all, cool, eh? It's all rainbows. <laughs> it's all rainbows and sunshine up here at the moment. You know what I mean? I'm going to keep it that way. Well, that's good. Well, that's a that's a happy household. So, um, no, it's good. It's good to know. I'm glad. Uh, you know, you're going well, and there's no head noise up there. <laughs> what about um, you, mate? Bubble life. Bubble life. Yeah. So. Um, it's going all right for me. Uh, one thing I do want to touch on is um, our mate the other day on radio. Oh, yeah. I didn't speak about that in the intro, but... So, on radio, like, this is live. Um, you know, since the bubbles happened, Texas moved in, which I'm sure some people have seen, and on radio had the um, audacity to sort of call us out mm. and put us on show. Yes. He, he didn't say very nice things about living with us, actually. Yeah, so apparently... Um, we we gang up on him. Um, mm. That's what you expect in this household, apparently. If you were to live with us, I just want to know from your like your side of the story. Yeah, um, <coughs> and then I'll, I'll I'll chip in. Obviously, what would what would you expect living with Tex? Sell sell it to people. Or um, sell it or it might or be <laughs> if you want to get rid of it. Yeah, because like, you don't want it. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, uh, what would oh, you it's expect? It's the grass It's the grass <laughs> 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 No. Nah, what what would you expect living with Tex? Okay, so. Um, I think this is the problem is that me and you are very outgoing and you'd call us extroverts. Tex is an introvert. Mm. Um, it's so different. Yeah, he's di it's di he's different. It's different. We're different. We're weird people, me and you. And <laughs> I feel like living with us and especially the fact that he doesn't have a proper bedroom here because this house is not made for three, three boys living yeah. here. Um, I feel like that if someone is an introvert and they like hanging out and not really talking to their roommate or um, yeah, coming out the back, you know, when they're all out the back, tanning up. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Trying to look good. Yeah. But I will give him like, he's, he's clean, cleaner than you. Yeah. He's cleaner than you, but he doesn't, he doesn't have the energy that you do. So I can deal with your uncleanliness <laughs> because of how, how fun you are to live with. But also, like for someone out there who isn't as probably outgoing as us, Tex, Tex would be a perfect roommate for you. Yeah. What do you think? Well, if you um like a quiet household, a clean, quiet, um, organized household, um, you, he's your guy. He's really your guy. Um, for us, or for me, uh, I like loud. I don't mind messy. Mm. Um, so it's a bit of a – it doesn't really match well with me. But, I mean, Tex probably only had about 10 seconds to, to – Give his side of the story. I think we've had a little bit longer. Yeah. I feel like we should probably maybe get him on here in a future podcast. Um, he's he's just left the house today, so that's not possible right now. But uh, maybe he it should tell his it. his side of the story. He could maybe talk about what who his favorite roommate is and probably me. the pro, pros and cons of us. So yeah. The pros and cons of us. Um, what are the pros and cons for us in this bubble? For us. Um, now Bubble life. The cons is a very long list, so I'll start with the pros. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah, so yeah. I think number one, and I reckon you agree with this, I feel like it's narrowed the focus. There's no distractions. So yeah. um, for people who are just trying to get after it, like you, um, you know, I mate, the, the crocodile. Yeah, he's big, he's really getting the after big, it, the Matty Croker. Coke, Coke can, yeah, yeah, um, <laughs> yeah. Our mate, our our really good mate. Like mm. he's a good mate of ours. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, it has. It, it's narrowed the focus in the sense where, like, you go home, and uh, like for me, I'd go home and I wouldn't think about footy because I'd be going down mm. hanging with my mates, and then the next day, um, when I get to training, then I think about it. But now it's like I go home. There's nothing really to do. I'm just thinking about footy. I could go into the club earlier because you get to be around the boys. Like yeah, these exactly. sort of things. It sort mm. of, um, yeah, it makes you want to be around, like the, for me, the club more, which is obviously footy. Mm. Uh, and I haven't really minded it either. I've um, actually really enjoyed it. I think it's showed me uh, what my priorities are and what is really important to me. Obviously, um, you know, we can talk about the negatives like, you start to realize how much you miss your family, mm. friends that aren't involved with footy, like yeah. our our boys, like Gibbsy and Eli, and you know all of that sort of crew. Like it's hard not being able to Still. hang out with those guys. And um, another pro, um, which is probably hand in hand with seeing them, like saving money. Um, you know, when you're spending time with the boys, you're often out. Um, just a little one, like 
you get, there's not unless you're sh- online shopping, which I think a lot of people probably have. Mm. Um, I did straight away. <laughs> so much. Yeah, but you love your clothes and mm. stuff. I'm yeah, I do. I do. I'm a little bit different. Um, yeah, so saving money has been a pro and um, being in this bubble and looking at everyone out on the outside, um, you appreciate those little things, which is also a con. Like, mm. I think a con is I don't get to do those things or have those things. Like, um, but appreciating little things, you probably learn that a lot more. Yeah, I think um, – and one big thing is – you know, the game being able to come back on because of it. Like, that's probably the biggest pro out of all of it is that yeah. we've been able to play 20 games. <laughs> make finals. Make finals for the first time yeah, in it's seven exci- years. It, like, there, is, there is pros and there, and there are cons. What what would your big cons be? Um, big one, my family. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, like I just wrote my family and being restricted to um, not being able to see them and my friends because they're a big part of – our lives, mm. um, everyday lives. And yeah, so I reckon that's probably my main cons. Yep. Yeah. I don't mind staring at um, the same walls every day, um, but I do mind not seeing my mates. Mm. And like I've said before, there's people going through a lot worse than us. Like we're lucky enough, we've still got a job. Um, but I think like another negative, and it was only just because I went to the beach today, is like not even being able to go to the beach without a supervisor. So yeah. <laughs> it's like being yeah, a little kid again. Eyes are on you. Everything you just wig out. I know. And then like today we we're standing there and this guy had his phone out and I thought he was trying to like take photos of us, but we were allowed to be at the beach. So I was like, yeah, it didn't really worry me, but I was just like, surely he's not trying to get us in trouble because like we're down here yeah, going for a swim. Yeah, but yeah. It's, um, yeah, that's back to you having that head noise, but um, <laughs> <laughs> it's not there anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so w- while we're talking about, like, we're obviously in the bubble, in the spotlight sort of thing, eyes on us. But when we get out of the bubble, um, you know, what are the first three things you're doing? Okay, so number one thing I'm going to be doing is, and I know our our friend producer Croker yep. will um will appreciate this, is that I want to go to the movies, and I feel like us three techs. Yep. Um, we, we'll probably take a, a pretty solid crew to the movies because that's one thing that we haven't been able to do at all. And that, that sucks. That used not to be our weekly, like, oh, you forget about those. Like, we used to do that literally once a week. Mm. Be so excited too. Yeah. I can't wait to do that. Yeah, 100%. Get a little popcorn, Maltesers. Oh, <laughs> the layback seats <laughs> at Hoyt's Charlestown. I'll, I'll literally just go there for the popcorn. Yeah, I get. I like, I, and I can't go to other cinemas now because of those recliner chairs. Yeah, once yeah. it's go. Once you go to them, you just never go back. So that's exciting. What about you? What's your first thing that you're gonna do? Honestly, the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna text. I'm gonna make a group chat. Yep. Um, I'm gonna say, like, to all the to the group chat, I'm gonna be at the X X place at about three thirty. Mm, I love <laughs> it. Um, for a snitty. Yep. And a beer. And whoever can make it, meet me there. Um, that would probably be the first thing. Just spending time with, with the boys again um, at a pub will be – is probably what I'm looking forward to the most. Yeah, I think, um, I think I'm think i with you with that, but I might be there a bit earlier, 12 o'clock, maybe as soon as it opens. <laughs> I'll be there ready to go. I reckon one thing you're, you're forgetting, and this is, this is you written to a T, is going down the beach and laying on the beach, not even going in the water. Mm. You know, the sun's coming out and just sitting there tanning. Yeah, well, that's one of, that was my second. That was my second option. So I think – and because part of this whole um, monk – you know, ninja ninja mindset <laughs> is that um is that like in in the mornings I'll go to I'll go down to the beach and do a few few activities, but it's in my car at the moment. Um, so to be able to go sit on the sand, then go for a swim after, is just something that has got me so excited. <laughs> it really has. And then I and then and then also to go and tan down the beach for the whole day because that's. A big part of like summer and in the off season is what we do. You know, we get down the beach. Yeah, yeah, hundred percent. It's the best. Um, last, my last, last one. one. Yeah. My last one. One thing I want to do. This is a bit different. Um, I don't like. We get a tattoo. To be honest. Okay. I've got a few tattoos in mind. Yeah. yeah so I mean, I haven't been to do that. You've probably you've said a couple of things that I want to do. Um, so any what are you what are you chasing? I'm um, not like a big big, not like a big like. I'm not one of those guys that get big pieces apart mm. from my tamoko, but um, Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> just um, 
Just a little one, just a few little ones. Probably just try and think of some things that have um, I've done throughout the year this year. So mm. they'll probably be they they'll be pretty silly. Like yeah. They'll be they'll be shit tats. But um, mm. yeah, I want to get some tattoos, and that's probably my yeah three things. That that's I your do. three. Last one for me is, and we've discussed this before. So I think maybe you can book like tables of ten or twelve. Um, I want to get a bus right. Or like a mini bus, get yeah. twelve of our closest, twelve, twelve, or as many as we can get out there. If we could get thirty out there, I'd take thirty out there on a coach. You know what I mean? But I want to go out to the Hunter Valley uh, for a long lunch. Go to one of the nice restaurants out there, and you know, just sit back and enjoy just some of the enjoy finer, the finer, the things finer in things life. in life that that we haven't been able to enjoy. So enjoy the finer things in life, especially because um, I feel like as wine drinkers mean you have grown a lot in the last year like we probably we started last year on our world tour um hmm. mostly in barcelona was probably the place where we drunk drunk at the most and then probably since then you know our eyes have started to open up a little bit to it so uh you know the hunter valley has some of australia's finest wines so who are you, who are we inviting Ooh, it's I, hard i don't want to oh it's hard to think on the spot because you don't want to miss out on anyone i know i feel i'm gonna feel bad like i'm <laughs> But I feel like um, when, we, when we get back, well, we can we can link up with them. I don't know. Yeah, that's a good point. I feel um, so. Obviously, me, you, uh, gonna go, Maddie Croak, Goss. Yeah, um, Taxi, Randy, um, and this is assuming we can only take ten. So um, this is this is tough. Oh, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Doss there at six. Have to. Um, he would. He would thrive. Yeah, that's his element, and I feel like he's one of the guys that can really um, only enhance our wine knowledge mm. and, and experience. Just and because he's a wonderful chef as well, so <laughs> we'd be going to the best restaurants. Uh, seven, eight, nine, ten. Man, this is this is really getting hard. Um, oh, have you? Can you help me? Have you said Eli? Oh no, I haven't said Eli. Would yeah, you, it's yeah, Eli. I'd probably take Eli. Yeah. Um. Oh, Maka. Oh yeah. Yeah, Maka. I'd probably go Maka. You throw the ten, the ten man invite. One or two will slip, mm. and then you know pick up Maka. <laughs> like, it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean. Maka would have to come. Dos will come. Yeah, because and I feel like part of Maka's, um, you know, his Newcastle experience should be a trip to the to the vineyards. Mm. Um, done the right way like uh, to be honest I'd like to go with the whole team with with all of our team and take and take their partners too um, you know yeah probably be yeah, yeah, yeah or maybe not maybe just the boys <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> yeah just the boys <laughs> come on man what am, what am come I, on man seriously what are you doing that's, that's not me yeah man. just that's the boys um, man that, that's so that's that's basically our bubble life like mm. um, we've with things we're looking forward to, things we've done, your injury, um, that's all been, that's all happened in the last um, eight months. Yes. Eight months. What else has happened in the last eight months? Or what actually happened last year that's inspired us yeah. to drop something a well, year we've later? Had eight, eight months to sort of butt heads. Um, and this brings us to, to the, the merch, the World Tour merch. Yes, it does. Um, like, well, we sort of spoke about it. We never really nailed it on what we wanted to do. We were just like, oh, it'd be cool to get teas. And that's always the go. Mm. Um, and you sort of come up with the idea. Yeah. So when we've spoken about 257 and sort of our direction going forward, it's never really been about making it like a clothing company. We don't nah, we don't really want to sell, sell clothes, but we want to make it, I guess, a lifestyle brand in a sense. And um, part of that was dropping merchandise or, or apparel it's going to be really good quality stuff like we're, we're working with some good suppliers here and um yeah we wanted to make stuff about experiences that we've had and we thought the best way to do it was 2020 there's no such thing as a world tour so why yeah. don't we make a t-shirt celebrating our world tour last year yeah so basically it's got all the locations that we went on it um, and then we're just going to sort of drop some, you know, some little uh, photos and whatnot yeah. around it. Just to link it, just to make it all bind together sort of thing. So when, you know, people are like, oh, well, how, where did they go or where are they going? No, it's mm. where we've been. And, um, yeah, we want to, we'll, we'll create a vlog around it as well. Mm -hmm. um, 
I think that I think one of the coolest things about this stuff and this is our plan for the future is that we're only going to drop 257 of them. Yeah, so with shirts. Yeah. And hats. And a hat, yeah. And then all of them will be numbered. So say you have shirt 50, you're the 50th person to buy the shirt, it'll say 50 of 257. And these shirts will never be made again. So everything we make will be one of ones. They'll yep. never be made again. Um, and like, for example, we're doing a trip around Chrissy, so we might drop another shirt that lines up with that or a hat that lines which up will, with that. Which will be like a party shirt. It's going to be a party <laughs> shirt. It's going to be a party shirt. It's so. the festive season. There has to be a party it shirt. It is. It is. Um, maybe do some work with Tex uh, with his art. Yeah, we're going to... Try gonna and collab in that sense. Anytime sort of something pops up, oh, you know, we can create something around that, create a vlog around that. Um, yeah, so that's kind of our ideas around the merch. Mm. And there's already... There's, there's some out there already. Like yeah, there is. A couple is. people have it already. There's a little bit. We... We sort of mucked around, and this is this is where the world tour merch idea started. Like, we just wanted to get some clothes made for us. That was literally it. And we bought a, a heap of blank tees off, um, off uh, some blank t-shirt <laughs> website. I don't know why that took me so long to get out. And <laughs> <laughs> You've got one on now, so if you're on YouTube oh, yeah. watching, um, he's I've got, got he's got one of them. Um, yeah. I've kind of got that made up. You stand up. So it's on the back, on the front, 2007 collective. <laughs> um, yeah, undefined and unorganized. That, that These ones won't be for sale. They're yeah, they're exclusive. Yeah, this will be, there'll be a, some stuff that we just sort of make that you probably won't be able to get your hands on. Maybe one day, but to start with, this is going to be sort of for us and our mates. And yeah, we just we just like wearing stuff that we want to wear. So we're just going to design make stuff that own. we think's cool which is cool which is exciting which will c keep us sort of rolling keep the, the ball going um whereas we're not going to have these huge eight month um halts where we don't do anything or say anything um mm. there will always be sort of stuff coming out we want to get the vlogs going again um so it'll be based around where we went uh we went to london and all these cool places um like for me my favorite place where we went was barcelona yeah and it's paper bro yeah, maybe in the, in the near, maybe not so far future if I was to travel again. Um, where would I like to go? I don't know, I might maybe put my feet up, like Fiji. But Ooh. that wouldn't be a place for the boys. I've done it before, bro. I went with my family, like with um, mum, dad, brother, uh, friend. <laughs> <laughs> friend? <laughs> yeah, one of my friend, one of my friend. And um, yeah, it, it what was... What type of friend? Like, are we talking like just, I don't know, was it just your mate? Yeah. Oh, uh, I'll get like Would you go back there sense, with your friend? In a sense. <laughs> with that friend? That's where you would take a friend. Oh. That's where you would take a friend. But I don't think you'd go there with the boys. Like, oh, okay. Unless you played golf every day. But then you're spent <laughs> by every night. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think for me, Barcelona loved it. London loved it. But I just have one regret with our Europe trip. And that was probably eating too much every night. <laughs> As you know, I ate too much. And yeah. then it took me so long. An hour. So it would, it would eat. And for an hour afterwards, Connor wouldn't say a word to me. And the first time I was like, this sucks. Like, what, what, like come on, bro. I'll get some energy about you. Second time I was like, okay, okay, this is, this is, a, uh, this happened last time. I know what's going to happen. <laughs> this is a problem. Third time I was like, I'm going to let this, I'm going to let him just chill. Bro, you, you eat your food. Oh, I'll just watch. I'll just enjoy the food as well. Hour goes by, bang. Afterwards, we're on. Yeah, that's that was like a common occurrence. Every night it would every be like night, that. Every night, bro. Um, it's because he was enjoying it. It was just the little things. It was. It was nice. What about? Um, oh, you said where your yeah. next place would go would be Fiji. I think for me personally, I'd have to say New York. And that's what I know. We we had uh, very premature discussions about um, going to America this year. But yeah. I think with. Uh, what's happening in the world right now, America's probably a while off traveling, but New York's even a place that I'd like to live one day. Yeah, it's very much your vibe. Yes. <laughs> in, you in my a monk in New York though. Yeah, but you can, bro. Because <laughs> I'm going to do it. You know what I mean? There's no... There's, monks are made for like Fiji and that. It's slower. Yeah, but like... It's all go, go, go in New York. Yeah, but I'll be so zen, bro, that I won't even be in the rat race. You know what I mean? Everyone else would be stressing and I'll just be chilling. I'll be like, this place is hectic. You'll love, you'd love New York for the fashion, yep. nightlife, life, day life. Oh, is it the city that never sleeps? Is that uh, New York? Yes. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Yeah. You'd love it. Yeah, it would be, it would be incredible. But um, yeah, so maybe when, you know, we're early 30s, I'll be living over there. Mm. You'll be coming over and visiting me and yeah, I That's don't know. Exciting. We might be in... 
We might be doing podcasts in New York. Well, that's the thing. I might be <laughs> podcasting with you, but I'll be in New York and you could yeah, be we'll do anywhere. Like a Zoom or we'll do something else. Uh, by then, 10 years, 10 years time, we'll sort something we'll out. Keep it going. Episode 1,000 maybe mm. by that point. So that's the merch. Um, yeah, episode 1,000. We'll have 1,000 to... Thousand different episodes with thousand different merch uh, apparel. Um, so that's the merch. That's that's sort of what we've got planned. Um, it's coming out in the next couple of weeks, uh, but we'll post it on our socials. Um, yeah, next is like footy chat. Obviously, we do play footy, um, and it is in a very very exciting. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> sorry. Five five games <laughs> in a year. In a year, <laughs> three three games in ten minutes. <laughs> wow. It's not much, man. Wow. Yeah, three games in ten minutes is all I played this year. It's bad, eh? Wow. I never, I never actually. Do you, are you okay? It's better. <laughs> it's, better than, <laughs> it's better than some. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's, our true. Producer. that's true. Um, wow. I did, I never actually thought about that. Mm. If you add up all your minutes from the games, that's how. So me. if I add up all my minutes from the games, I got through three games. Yeah. In, against the um, against the Penrith Panthers, I played nine, and against. Uh, the Bulldogs have played four. Yeah, wow. So it's not much. No, it's not. Well, um, so I, I play footy in this household and, <laughs> and Connor watches. I watch. Um, <laughs> uh, Texas, Texas in as well. So it's, yeah, it's finals footy. Um, exciting time of the year. You know, we, the Knights haven't um, been in for seven years. Yes, it's been a long time. 2013, I think they made the preliminary final against yeah. the Roosters and that's when the Roosters went on to win the comp. So it's definitely been a long time for Newcastle. I feel like um, the fans deserve it though. They've yeah, been they through do. a lot. Last last six years have been tough, man. Yeah. Well, last, before I got here that year. Oh, yeah, like six years. Yeah. And, um, yeah, it has been like tough. A, like, I mean like four wooden spoons, three or four wooden spoons. Can you, Craig, how many? Four? Four wooden spoons? Yeah, I four, think it is four. Four, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it, uh, the thing that I uh, about this bubble is that, like I we can't be out in public and sort of fully experience, you know, what the city is like, what the what the people around town are like, um, which I I really I wish the bubble wasn't a thing and, mm. and we could get out there, um, but it is like it's in it's, due it's, time, it's, in due time, yeah, in due time, um, it's exciting. Um, a bit of footy chat, like we'll just we'll cover we'll cover over the year. Um, you know, we haven't really sp- no one's heard from us in on that sense um in eight months so like the i mean toughest game of the year do you want to talk about your toughest <coughs> um <laughs> well it depends what injury hurt the most <laughs> <laughs> oh they were both they were both not fun at all i think toughest game i got through I'd have to say South just purely because it was the closest, but that was like really hard the last 20 minutes. We sort of had, you know, a 20 point lead and then, and then they come, yeah, they they come back. back. Um, but yeah, like that was nerve wracking. <laughs> yeah. But I think um, injury wise, I got to go. The Achilles probably hurt the most. So the dogs is the toughest game that I had this year. Can I, I don't know if I can say this, but I'm going to say it anyway. What's the toughest game to watch? <laughs> Toughest game to watch. Yeah, that was that the when the boys are playing, bro. Probably against the Sharks when they just kept smacking you in the head. Ooh. Yeah, thank you, bro. Like, uh, like I was just sitting. Were you there. off it? Yeah, I was off it. You want to get on there? Yeah, I wanted to get on there. Like, I probably wouldn't do anything, but <laughs> 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 it was probably just more the thought. Like, I was just like, oh, that's my boy. Come on, yeah, come on, man. That's my dog. Like, but then three tries anyway. So, <laughs> you know what I mean, I thought you were gonna say like. um I don't know, like the Cowboys. Oh yeah, those <laughs> those games are tough to watch. The Warriors was really tough to watch. In a different sense. Yeah. Uh, for me, the toughest game of the year, um, and I reckon the boys would probably agree, was round eight against Manly. Um, I can't really remember too well like the circumstances, but I know. I mean, every game is a must win, but I just feel like that one. I don't know if we come off loss, something like that, but it was like leading into the game. I just remember we were, we were really nervous and everyone was on edge, and I think it was like fourteen. 14-12 yeah. But that's, and, but that's what we needed at the time, that sort of win. That was an easier one to watch for me <laughs> because, of, because of the result. But yeah. what um what do you think the hardest game of your career has been? Um, the because like, I, can't really, career. I can't really talk about seasons, so yeah. I've got to be able to talk about some. some <laughs> <footage>. <laughs> um, for me, hardest one, I reckon, was when I 
was fullback when I de- not don't debut, but um, my first game fullback for Queensland. Oh yeah, I thought that was the hardest when you get thrown in, um, like to that middle position and you're just running around. It's kiddies, eh? <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you, you, there's no really ex- there's expectations, but there's no weight on your shoulders because you just you just go out there and give it your all. Mm. When you're when you're at the back for Queensland. Um, You've got a sense of um, you got a huge role within the team, mm-hmm. in, um, yeah. And I just kind of I didn't feel that, but um, yeah, that was I, I knew that that was what what happens when you take that role, and um, I reckon that was the hardest game. And I remember if Naps didn't like drop it over the try line and almost score, I don't know, like I was I was spent, like I was. I was almost crawling over to him. Uh, he didn't score it, but it gave us like I don't know a like break, a break for like a minute and a half. You won that game too, eh? Yeah, and we and I needed that break so bad. Mm. Um, but that's probably the hardest. Yeah, I remember that really cool photo of you and Naps. Yeah, Might have posted on the gram. Yeah, he sent it to me the other day. He's like a big bro. He's like a big brother to us. Oh, eh? he's, he's just the best, a legend. Man. He's the best. Everyone, everyone loves him. Miss him, eh? Miss him so much, eh? Uh, for me, toughest game of my career. Uh, I'd think. It was in 2017, so my second year in first grade, and I was playing fullback at the time. Uh, Mick Gordon had been injured, so he was out for like six weeks or four weeks. I think I played a month at fullback. Yeah. And um, we versed the Storm in Melbourne, and I cannot remember the score exactly, but they won by a, a try like just on full time. Like it, we, it was so close. And um, it sort of – that was the year that, you know, we made the semifinals and then – Lost to you guys at the Cowboys. Yeah. So how many games into your career was that? Not many, eh? Nah, I was probably like twenty ga- twenty games in. Yeah, yeah. and I, I really enjoyed it. Like it was, um, it was probably one of the best games. That, I mean, at fullback that I played in NRL. One of the guess, best games I played at fullback before, for sure. I actually um, blocked a field goal. Like it was the weirdest thing ever. A shot from fullback, like through, through. and it and it hit me. And then I thought, like I was, I was like, that's so boys. Like, and then. And then they scored. <laughs> yeah. When they got the because they got the ball back off that, and then oh, they scored. They scored. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it, that hurt. But yeah. big games. But yeah, that was um, that was probably the toughest. I mean, yeah. What about um, like we've watched a fair bit of footy this year because we're back yeah. in the bubble. <laughs> so weird. yeah, it's a weird. It's a weird uh, hobby of ours now. Yes, it is. And I, like I've been enjoying it. I feel like the game um with the six to go is really made it a lot more interesting but who who do you reckon the three players for you that have stood out the most are yeah um obviously um the man that's probably going to win dlm i reckon cleary um you can't go past him yeah and he's, he's been good man like yeah I, I was thinking about it the other day like he's um sort of come up the same age as me i think he's my age or um maybe a year older a year older yeah he's the 22 or yeah. 23. Um, and I've, I've played against him once in 20s, I remember. Um, and even like the difference between him this year and last year, huge. Mm. Um, yeah, so he's pretty much led that side to a, a minor premiership. Um, you know, I, I'd like to think hopefully he doesn't <laughs> lead them to a premiership and, and we can um, pip one. But yeah, I think him. Uh, I like Rog um, for, the, for the Warriors. Just probably more what he's done for that club, for the NRL, for the Warriors, mm. given the circumstances. Yeah, um, and Cameron Smith because he's a goat. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> this is, like I just, I, he's just a goat. He's been so good again. Mm. He and they keep talking about him retiring, but if he wants to put a Queensland jersey on, give it to him. Uh, he he should please. do that, bro. Please, he should do that. I just think uh, I don't understand why all this talk is about him retiring. If he's still sweet, yeah, and he doesn't look like he's not. Myth- he's still as good as he's ever been for the last <laughs> ten years. Like. <laughs> How yeah. long been <laughs> and somehow his body man like he just is never gets injured yeah it's crazy i think he'd be one of my top three as well but i'm gonna go yeah cleary um luke keary i love watching him play man yeah he's a little competitor so good what he's is little uh, matt matt navel say <laughs> <laughs> luke keary <laughs> <laughs> the <Okay>. ultimate competitor <laughs> <laughs> nah, he is good to watch. He is literally he's a little mad the ultimate comp- competitor. But I think um I think top three players, bro, I'm gonna put you in there and I mean it's not because I'm sitting across from you. I like <laughs> if you weren't I would tell you. But um Thanks, bro. I think like 
looking at your year this year and comparing it to the one where you came second in Daily M, I, I feel like you're having a better year. Mm. But we're also going better as a team, so maybe you're not going to get as many votes as you did that year. And yeah, that sort of thing. And it was that was your first year, like that was your breakout year. So all eyes were you on were on you more than they sort of are now. Like people come have come to expect that from you. But I feel like looking at you statistically and the way you've been in games the whole time, like you, you always get the, getting the ball in your hands. You're having a lot more I'll touches. Take, um, yardage carries now. Yardage carries, <laughs> like that was that wasn't there. I never, I never touched the ball inside our fifty uh, a couple of years ago. Um, I didn't actually think it was important, but yeah, no, it is. Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. <laughs> I feel weird, but thank you. No worries, bro. Um, it's hard to take compliments like that. It is so hard, especially when you're sitting right across from each other, I staring know. each other in the eyes. <laughs> well, you kiss like, me. Like <laughs> 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 it gets a bit weird. I know. Um, yeah. So didn't do any more footy chat before because I mean it's been eight months. Nah, I'm I'm happy. I'm happy to call a footy chat at that. I know the footy chat. Quick, quick, and uh, it's gets weird. We don't want to talk about too much for you. Yeah, we'll, we'll be able to do a review of the season once that's all over, and you know, probably mine will go for thirty seconds. Yours, we can probably talk about it for ten. <laughs> um, but anyway, uh, yeah, we'd just like to obviously thank you guys for um, bearing with us. We know it's been a long eight months. Um, now that we're nearly out of the bubble, um, we're going to be producing stuff a lot more. Yeah. We've got a podcast season two coming up, so um, we're going to have some big guests on there. Can't tell you any names yet. That'd, ru- that'd ruin the surprises Huge. and that. Huge. Um, but yeah, that's that's really exciting. Obviously, we've got the merch coming. Um, that's basically going to be a pre-order as well. So uh, as you buy that, it will then be delivered probably four weeks later. And like we said, there's only 257 of them being sold. So um, make sure you're getting quick. Yeah. Because they'll never be made again. That is a that is a collector's <laughs> item. That's one of one. One of one. Yeah, yeah. collect it. Collective? Uh, oh, anyway. Oh, I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, um, the last thing that we forgot to talk about was um, what we were going to do for the listeners. Yeah. So we've come up with an idea thanks to a bit of help from our producer. Um, and, you know, he, he listens to a few podcasts and he sort of come up with this idea that um, basically if fans DM us, we're going to pick one each and give them a shout out at the start of the next episode. So um, send your DMs in and we'll pick two for basically when we do podcast season two, episode one, yeah. which will be out in the off season. So so make sure you DM us on 257 Collective. Mm. Um, it'll be easier and yeah, we'll be able to filter through them and we'll just pick a couple out. Um, read, read your name and, and what you said. Funny, um, can be sprays, you know, it can be sprays. You can say, you know, we helped you with your day or like anything you want. Um, yeah, and then also right where you're from, and um, you know, if you're in England, if you're listening to us, and we we used to be worldwide, um, probably not anymore, (laughs) but yeah, um, we're on that comeback season, yeah. So, uh, yeah, we want to hear from you, but yeah, thank you. Um, hope you guys enjoy. No, we've got big things coming, like Connor said, um, but yeah. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Uh, it's been a while. I haven't said that for a while. I know. Thanks for having us. Bye. Thank you guys.